Oh, 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 welcome in to a very special episode of Sports Den. Of course, this is our holiday show. Halloween. 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 It's, it's a our, holiday. It's our special holiday Halloween edition. We're your hosts. I'm Kenton. That's JW. Hello. Yeah. And we have a very special show. I mean, yeah, it's always a special show when we get to be together. This probably hasn't happened in like, I don't know, four years that we posted a show together. Really? I, well, besides, not, in our, not in our homes. <laughs> right, not at our homes. We've done it the last two weeks from our basements. Wow. But together, this is good. Hey, this is this this should be fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm we're, excited. We're, of course, you know, dressed up in, you know, for the theme. We've got crew members dressed up mm -hmm. for Halloween. Just, uh, you know, going to have a little fun. I'm pretty freaked out by what's going on. Yeah, right oh. over there. I, I yeah, cap with Brett <laughs> right there. I like that. Yeah. That's good. Captain of the but Titanic. One, camera then have, one. Then we have socially distanced Jason. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that. I don't think he follows the protocols very well, I think well, most Jason. people want to distance themselves from right. Jason. That's an so easy one to do. Yeah. We'll All right. Up. Should we jump into it? Let's do it. A little yes, high please. school football? Yeah. All right. We had our game of the week. It was pushed from Saturday to a different location and back to Blaine and <laughs> turned out at Blaine on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> he wasn't there. Thank goodness. I would, never would have gotten the, the broadcast start out of my mouth. Okay, this is worse. Yeah. Somehow this is worse. Is that Matt Waldron under that beard? No. I, I don't even it know. Like it, Blaine in Roseville. At Blaine High School in Kaston Snow. Bengals ready to go for win number two. Looking for it. Little play action fake. Little throw to the tight end. Jacob Imslander, the score from seven yards out from Tyler Schuster. Start of a big day for Schuster and company playing the Roseville Raiders. Playing their first game of the year. Schuster again. Back at it. Still in the first. Bengals hadn't scored in the first quarter all year. Now they've scored twice. A little 20-yard snap and pitch to Dylan Myers from Tyler Schuster. And it is 14-0 Bengals with a couple of extra points as we go to the second quarter. This guy's been pretty good throughout the year. Josh Schlungen. Damn. Yep. He goes right home, does the Schlungen from 15 yards out. It's 21-0 Bengals. Yeah, it looks better when it's, a, <laughs> when it's a skeleton, I guess, in the corner of the screen. Roseville got on the board, though, before the end of the half. Anthony Vo from Ricky Weber, the senior QB, finds his tailback. And trying to make it a game for the Raiders. 21-7 to as we go to the break. Bengals put away any thoughts of that early on in the third quarter. Look at this dime. Schuster drops back. Sling. Max Stepanek right there. Touchdown saving tackle made. But a pitch and catch of 30-plus yards to set up a touchdown run for Schuster. He threw for two. He ran for one. And he helped the Bengals to a 28-7 to lead. The defense, well, it showed up too, Ken. I know you're asking. Isaac Moen, pick from near the goal line. He runs it back out to midfield. There was still a quarter to play, and that was what it was, but this play right here sealed it with two minutes to go. Bengals would win this game 28-13, to their second win of the season. Yeah, where are you throwing that there's Moen? Yeah. Superhero. Look at that kid. <laughs> Don't mess with that kid's stat page. 28-13. Bengals get the win. You see the totals aren't that different as far as the offense, but the Raiders had three key turnovers, including two early in the first half. Josh slung in another big game, a touchdown at 138. 132 through the air and two touchdowns for Tyler Schuster. 28-13, Bengals are 2-1. And, and more football. Oh, oh yeah. Go smash your pumpkin. Spring Lake Park. At Coon Rapids, Love at game. Spring Lake Park, a rematch of last year's uh, state tournament game. A lot of turnovers in that one. There's some turnovers in this one here, too. Uh, you got Coon Rapids driving, but and they throw it to the end zone. Oh, Joey Sorensen. He is there with the interception for the Panthers in the end zone. And the Panthers would drive and capitalize on the turnover. Nate Lickey gets the handoff, and then he throws the ball to a wide open Caleb Skelly. He settles down, has a snack, gets the football in a 50-yard score. A Skelly snack! 7-0 Panthers. Then Aaron Payne bringing it. What, the Aaron? He's bringing the Aaron on the side of caution down the sideline, 45 yards for the score. Extra point makes it 14-0 Panthers. <laughs> and then... Late in the second, punching it in once again. Aaron Payne, <laughs> twenty to nothing Panthers. Still in the second quarter, late. 
Coon Rapids was going to punt, and they're like, nope. And then Sperling Park's like, okay, we'll take it right here. And they do. And then Sperling Park says, as long as we're here, let's score another touchdown. And they do. Nate Licky punches it in. Two yards out. 26 nothing at the half. Panthers. That's Licky again? Licky again. Whoa. He throws for a touchdown, and he passes for a touchdown. And then he catches the touchdown, receiving touchdown. Oh, my. Nate Licky. Put it on the board. Yeah. Aaron Clausen to Licky, and then stealing the deal. You'll never guess. You'll never miss. Joyce Sorensen, he's got the interception. Look at that. Uh, Panthers, they get the shutout. 34 0. Final Steal score it. thanks to CTN for the footage. Panthers win. The Panthers win. The Panthers win. Right? Ooh. She's excited. You should be excited. I mean, Nate Licky, a passing touchdown, a rushing touchdown, got and it. A receiving touchdown. That's why you get the, yeah. the Thor hammer. You know what he didn't get is a punting touchdown? That's okay. Return a kick, Nate Litke. Right? Come on. Yeah. Unhook the trailer. He doesn't yeah, even return I hope you kicks. Build, I hope you build off this game and expand your repertoire. Clausen throws for 77 yards. Repertoire. And a score repertoire. Who speaks French anymore? <laughs> Skelly, of course, gets his touchdown. Joey Sorensen, three interceptions. Three. Right? The hat trick. And 10 of, tackles. Of picks. 10 tackles to boot. And, uh, yeah, good game for the Panthers. We'll, we'll chalk it up as a win. <laughs> good, because yeah. they beat them. So hopefully you put it in that win column. All right, you want scary? You yeah. talk Cougars and Crimson. Whoa. And you talk the mercy of whatever camera this is. But the Crimson getting off to a good start from the 50, trying to build on a win against Blaine last uh -oh. week. Oh, let me catch that guy. Get him. Michael Zupke. Oh, uh. he's down to the 12 still. 38-yard run. Ah! Defense in hold. I don't know what's going on there. It's shaking. It's no. bright. It's scary. Blair Witch. It's scary. Oh, it's a Cougar touchdown. Are you I sure? I see it. Yep. Watch. We'll oh. get it. Elijah Ward running off left side, seven yards out, oh, okay. dragging tacklers into the lights and into the end zone. Cougars have missed the PAT, so it's 6-3 oh. after the Crimson scored a field goal. Late in the half, big time bomb down the field with time running down. Mason Lindsay about 40 yards through the air. There's less than two seconds left. Trying to get in again for Elijah Ward. It will be stopped this time by the Crimson. We go to the half. Maple Grove already a 33-yarder. How about a 32-yarder from Connor Fournier? How about a little more French? 38. It's even further. Fournier. My bad. 38. As uh, then the Cougars tied at six. Tied no more. Lance oh. Liu makes his way into the end zone and scores. Extra point is crucial. Bang. Oh. Got it. Ding. Barely. Ding. Good. But hey, like ring the doorbell on Halloween. Yep. Clink, and you get the candy. They got it. Crimson trying to do something late. And it wasn't that. Oh, yeah. That is not the play you're looking for. Throw it off screen. Yep, there it goes. Cougars win it 13 to 6. We'll call it a defensive struggle. I wasn't yeah. there. That looks like a defensive struggle to yeah. me. Maybe it was just a struggle. But Cougars Crazy. get the win. That's a big one. I don't know what that yeah. was. Elijah Ward, another rushing touchdown. Lance Liu, 116 in the game clinching score. That guy was lighting director. 13 <laughs> 6. Cougars win. They've got the big rivalry game coming up against the Blaine Bengals. Mr. Newdall, Mr. Chance. Oh, my bad. You're already looking forward to the, the Centennial Blaine big rivalry Tuesday, matchup. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's only three days away. Three, oh my goodness. Three oh, days and it'll be here. Uh, yeah, uh, right now, Champion Fork's at the top. They got Osteo and Blaine and Maple Grove. Everybody, you know, everybody's right in the middle there. Blaine Centennial should be a good matchup as, uh, you know, Maple Grove beats Blaine, Centennial beats Maple Grove, Blaine beats Tina Gray, Tina Gray beats Centennial, so who knows, right? Who knows? Right? Right? Who even knows? Look at those schedules. Look at it. Look at it. I'm looking and I see uh, Spring Lake Park taking on the other SLP. So not only do we have Centennial Blaine, we have Battle of the SLPs. Ooh. What a weekend. The SLP and the Saint LP. I like it. I hope That'll they play some fun. of these football games. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're going to plan that that's going to be the case, right? But you never know. You never know. We're here. We're happy to be here. Uh, we're happy to do some soccer, too. Excuse me. Uh, okay. um, happy to do some soccer too over the last week, right? I mean, soccer. We we crowned some section champs, but first Ooh, we had to get there. We did, yes. We had uh, multiple teams, multiple teams in the section playoffs, and playoffs, there was there was I said that, and a section seven, uh, section five, double A semifinal. They put it off a few days, and then we're gonna slowly creep down into this section five, double A hallway. Oh, Spring Lake Park, the five seed. And number one, Champlain Park. It's not a Champlain Park. There's too much snow. Move back a couple days. Let's play at Maple Grove. Deal. Let's do it. Let's do it. Corner kick, Champlain Park. 
And it's Gauthier with the kick. More French. Oh, more. Can't have enough French. Delaney French. Johnson. That's French, right? One French. nothing, the Rebels. And then in the second half, Mally Mathis. The back of the net. That's French for goal. And then we have another one from Mally Mathis. Where did she put it, JW? The back of the net, wee wee. Wee wee. Oh, back of the net. 3 0 Rebels win. Thanks to CCX for the footage. You guys are the best. Bonsoir. I have you spring the park. You're kind of frustrated a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Her hat might be too tight. I think that's the biggest thing. All right, we had another one, and this was actually the one the in one. Section 7. To crown a champion, the Cougars already champions of the Northwest Suburban Conference in the regular season. Coach Ginger Flohog coaching her final game. Kaya Harper playing her final game for the Cougars. Bengals, though, trying to get it done. Kendall Stadden has done that all season long. Sammy Pruel down the sideline. We're in a scoreless game. This one was scoreless a long time. Sammy Pruel dumps it back out to her sister Claire. That one goes in, but wait, there's a flag and the celebration is muted. Oh, oh man. Uh -oh. Goal does not count. We're still scoreless. Up ahead looking for Kaya Harper. Kaya Harper paging Kaya Harper. Oh no. no paging Tess Inlow for the save. Look at it again. This time though, it's Different. Staden. Staden playing defense. They moved her around. It was the strategery, Kenton. This right. one nearly went home from Jada Kennedy, Kennedy, Kennedy. But there's the save from Jenna Lang. All right. Let's see. We've done this a while. Kaya Harper winding her way through. Kaya Harper down in the box. Uh-oh. In the second half, we're still scoreless. That could mean what? A penalty shot. Kaya Harper taken down. Pops back up. It's all on her right foot. The pressure was there. The fans were giving it to her, and bang! Where'd that go, Kenton? Uh, back it up! It sure did. one nothing. Cougars. Spoiler alert. This kick right here, that would be your game winner. Ooh. Valiant effort from Tess Inlow. She guessed correctly, but could not get there in time. So it's one nothing. Cougars. Bengals pulling out all the stops, bringing Kendall Stadden back to try and score. Can't hit that upper 90 right there. Kendall Stadden, 25 goals in the regular season. Looking for one to try and propel her team back to a tie as we're midway through the second half here. Bengals in white, keeping the pressure on. Couldn't do it. No redirect that time. Inside of four minutes to go. Cougars still up 1-0. Sarah straighting straight to the heart of the Bengals into the back of the net. Sorry, I took that one from you. Sarah Strading, a little icing on the cake, under four minutes to go, and the Cougars, that's all the icing they'll get in 2020. Section champs, courtesy of Strading with that late goal, and of course, Kaya Harper with the PK. Cougars finish it off 2-0, and Coach Flohog and company, very happy with how it went. One more time, Section 7 AA, AA champions, Blaine, great season, yep. second place. Centennial finishes on top, and that ends up being our last game of the year. That was it. I mean, I've developed a lot, and to play with these girls, like my best friends, is obviously so fun to me, and for them always being there for me, so it's really developed me as a player, too. Well, we're thrilled you're staying inside Minnesota to move on to play for the Gophers. What are you most looking forward to here the next year? Um, obviously playing with my sister again, playing with her my entire career, and I don't know, just stepping up to the next level and seeing what I can do and just meeting new people at the U and just excited overall for the college level. We came to this game, kind of, the first half was not so good, but after that, in the halftime, coach is like, we got to get our head in the game, and I think we did that perfectly in the second half. Just that we have to come out stronger than we did the first half because they started really strong, but we just need to start stronger. Yeah, it was tough at halftime. Blaine was amazing. Um, <laughs> they had way more energy than us. Their bench was loud the entire time. Their fans were cheering and we had nothing. And so I was, I was really nervous and I talked to my team at halftime that I feel like we're playing at Blaine. I don't feel like this is a home game. And I told my bench, uh, you guys need to stand. You guys are not sitting. You're gonna cheer from the sideline. Uh, the girls on the field need to feel your energy. Because and in the second half, I felt that it felt different. Um, I felt the energy. I felt that our players were playing with like a different step. I'm grateful, obviously, to have had as many as we've had here. Um, but I thought after the game, I think it just hasn't sunk in yet because I haven't had the emotions that I thought I might have after the game. But 
it's been a pretty busy uh, end of the game with talking to different reporters and taking pictures. And I think it hasn't really sunk in that that this is it. That is it. <laughs> Ginger Flohog, last game coaching the Cougars, I'd say for the foreseeable future. You never know what's going to go on. But, you just uh, never know. You just, Jill you Beckin know. came back for some single girls Jill Beckin did, you know. at least once, maybe <laughs> like twice. Coming back again, back. maybe. Uh, all right, well, that puts a bow on, uh, on yeah. girls' soccer. Hats off, and congratulations to not only the Bengals, but the, the Cougars. Yep. Great career, Kaya Harper and Ginger Flohog. A lot of fun. We were looking forward to that game, and it did not disappoint. Lots didn't. of fun. Boys for the Cougars didn't disappoint either. No. They were a 500 team throughout most of the year, but a lot of close losses, and they ended up in the section championship. And Kenton, they weren't just in it. They went to win it yeah. at Duluth East. Uh, take that, Greyhounds. Take that. Cougars, travel up north, get it done. Bring home the hardware, and boys and girls end on a win. Congratulations. Absolutely. Great win for those. The old dueling section champs. Take a look at, uh, we also had some swimming and diving, section 7-2A girls championship. Here's what the Blaine Bengals did, look at that. Second, third place is all over the place. Blaine took the freestyle relay, the 200 free, first place there. Allison Schrank on the 100 back, tied first place as well. And the Bengals, with all those twos and threes and a couple of fours and fives mixed in there, 459 and a first place team score. Congrats. 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 Uh, yeah, congrats all, all of the swimmers and divers. Yes. Uh, and uh, so we had Blaine and Centennial in Section 7AA. They competed on different days and in different sites, so it was a challenge. Uh, we do have footage of it, and we'll be able to put it together for highlights. But at this point, we wanted to at least let everybody know the information. These are the things that happen, and the diving, you see... Uh, one meter diving, Catherine Wolfel getting third, and Maddie Fuller fourth for Centennial. And uh, Lainey Anderley, she uh, got second in the 100, 200 freestyle, and then uh, the 500 free, she took first place. Congratulations to her and all of our swimmers and divers. And we hope to encapsulate this, and I know we've done uh, not great recently on getting the swimming and diving highlights up there. They're drying out. So, yeah. Uh, I'm working on it, and we'll, we'll probably put together our very own, yeah, don't, that's, that's, uh, that's unsettling at best, but uh, also <laughs> off topic. But we want to be able to assemble swimming and diving uh, together. Hopefully we'll have our own little show to oh. help wrap up, especially all that Are we gonna dress crazy up for section that stuff. Like we could. We, has to, we have to wear more than a Speedo, though. Don't mm. I know where you're going with this, and the answer is no. I was thinking old school swim, like, the T-shirt with oh, the red like stripes. Can we do those? Too? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. If you can find that. Yeah. Oh, well, I have yeah. it. Okay. What, what do you think I swim in? <laughs> I should have known. Should have. Uh, that's a total dad bathing suit, and we got dad yeah. Halloween costumes. Look at this. Yeah. Found, we picked this up on the way out the door. <laughs> uh, okay. Volleyball. Volleyball going strong. We had uh, plenty of volleyball action. We got more volleyball action coming tomorrow. Uh, if you're watching this on Monday or on Tuesday, it's Tuesday. We'll have volleyball action on Wednesday. NorthMetroTV.com will go over all that. Look at the juggling <laughs> clown. What the juggle this Speaking year. of, Park Center, Blaine, Bengals, and Pirates. Bengals were 2-2 two two coming into this one off a win against Spring Lake Park there at home. And this is just a note, by the way, if you listen to Bengal volleyball from time to time, you might hear Celeste Gorman calling these games. <laughs> Big time swing for Elena Schmitz. Bang goes the cannon. And uh, there it goes for the point. Park Center staying with them early. Bouncing back, going to kill their own. They're up 5 2 in the first set. <laughs> Fast forward, it's 24 to 14, though. Bengals win. Off the kill from Casey Brunette. We go on to the second. More Bengals near side. Big time swing and kill from Evelyn Thormisgard by the hammer of Thormisgard. There it is. We got the one in from right there. Back set, then to the middle, Jillian Hansen. Bang, gets the kill. Bengals continue to cruise in the second set, up 14 to eight. Big swing right side. Ella Capus, Capus down to the deck. And the Bengals up big. You go on to the third after taking the first two. Back set comes off the block, going nowhere. Paige Ewart got it done. This time the light touch from Brunette who had the ace earlier at the end of set. That one sends him towards the set points. And in the most thrilling finish of all, Ooh. into the net. 25-15, Bengals take the third. 
sarcastic. Thor was nothing if not a sarcastic demigod. All right, there we go. Three hey! Who are those latkes? Oh, catch it. Latkes for everyone. No, not you, though. <laughs> Ew. More volleyball. Stop clowning around. Off your Orioles. Never. At Centennial to take on the Cougar. Buckle up. Click. First set. Sydney Peterson from the back row to your back row. That's a kill. Asio Eliana Tecum. Dump on two, right on your side. Deal with it. And then it's Linnea Swenson. Everybody dance now, 25-18. Cougars take the first set. El Juego Numero Dos. Bernices Barlu with the kill. Pretty sure that's how you say it. Centennial, Spot more on. dumps, Jaden Klarner. Got it. And then Ashley Crowell. Boom goes the dynamite. 25-13. Centennial takes game two. Already to the third. third. Oh yeah. Third Juego. Totally. Another dumper from Osio. And then Kaylin Johnson of Centennial. Shutting the door. 25-9. Centennial takes the third set. They get the sweep. Three games to nil. Nil. I like that. That's how the French would say it if they were talking about soccer. Cool in the in the beginning, but once we got the hang of it and got in the groove, we really started pushing harder and we quickened up our play and that made them get frazzled and I think that really helped us in the end. Our season had been pulled to the spring, so that was hard. And then as soon as they told us, we were just so ready to get on the court and get going. Um, and we were so excited to see where the season could take us. It just made me feel so happy because it was like my whole JV on the varsity court. And I know I've only been playing for a couple of years. I played since eighth grade, but it's just nice to see all of my friends as like my family out there with me. We're finally getting there. It took a while just because there's a lot of there's not a lot of new players. There's only like a couple, but we're all trying to get together and make a bond, even though it's COVID and we can't really do a lot. So they can't really see our facial expressions, but we're doing the best that we can, just showing eye contact and showing love, but not actually physically touching. <laughs> yeah, we dance. Oh. All right, Armstrong, SLP. This one was last night. The uh, Panthers looking to break up a four-game losing skid. The Falcons looking to break up a two-game losing skid. Something's got to give, Kenton. That's what they say. Big swing, though, right there from Libby Madela. She had a great game for Armstrong. Great match for Armstrong. Great match as well, though, for the Panthers on the other side. Olivia Alvers, the captain, got things rolling. Ten-plus kills. Armstrong, yeah, they were a tough out all night long. Panthers would win the first two in this matchup, thanks in no small part to the captain, Olivia Alvers. Tops in four of the five major categories. Oh, crafty down the line. Too wide. Panthers get the point. Panthers, again, took those first two, but Armstrong goes tough through the third, tough through the fourth. And this one just kept rolling, rolling, rolling on at Spring Lake Park High School. And Armstrong able to make more plays down the stretch. Another block. Panthers just recover over the tape. Bang. Able to get it done right up front. Kaya Hoiby had a good day. Panthers, there was confusion. Was this it? It was it. That's how it ended. You talk about the climactic ending of a set on the other side into the net. Well, there was confusion, and then it ended in favor of the Armstrong Falcons. Madela again down the line. She was big. Kylie Ferguson, the changeup. Too wide. Panthers, this, none of these sets were separated by more than five points at any point throughout. And here, again, the drama as they come together. And that one ended the match. Yeah, that's how it ended, right there. Five sets, three to two, winning the final three. The Armstrong Falcons get their second win of the season. Panthers are one and five. Yeah, sometimes you uh, you have a close set and you just get, you're filling scoop right out of you. Oh, so, yeah. oh man, it's like that. 2020, I tell you. Centennial and Blaine right now find themselves at tree and tree in the middle of the conference. <laughs> Spring Lake Park uh, drops to one and five. Look at that. Maple Grove Crimson on top. Look at them. Look, just look at them. Leafy, flying high. Oh, man. They're covered in snow, but still gathering mold. Blaine hosting Osseo. We'll have that. Centennial hosting Coon Rapids. We'll have that. Wait, do we? No. Spring Lake Park uh, hosting Elk River. That one. That we have. Yeah. Hopefully CTN gets that Centennial. So hopefully we'll have highlights of, uh, you know, a lot of Come on, for CTN. Next week. Right? Hey. Do some work, guys. 
wow, <laughs> calling them out. Hey, they're friends of ours. Yeah. Okay, take it easy. Oh, I love those guys. All right, uh, our game's coming up. Mm -hmm. Don't want to turn you into a pumpkin. <laughs> right? Uh, right. You just said it, basically. But I think we have a fun graphic to really put a fine oh, point yeah, on. Oh, yeah, we've got there a couple go. of volleyball games. Uh, you know, football. football. There's that Blaine Centeno football game. I think you mentioned that. Yep, it's and happening. And then uh, more football next weekend. That's the plan. That'll take be the it, plan. Let's take it a day at a time. And tomorrow we have two volleyball games. And that's the day that we will take. That's the day we're going to take. First time around. Sounds good. OrthMetroTV.com for all the details. Exactly. Look at that. Good looking studio crew. Is I forgot. Is anybody in the actual uh, control room dressed up? I don't think so. They they've gone home. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, there they go. Hey! By oh seven. my goodness! Ah! Oh, yeah. Ah! <laughs> the scariest audio dude around. Yeah. Wow. Um, all right. Fun stuff. I was not prepared for that. No. <laughs> well, well, thanks everybody for watching uh, social media at North Metro TV and stuff like that. Let us know uh, what you think. Yeah, support your teams and uh, have a safe Halloween. You know. Wear a mask, Make but the, the kind that keeps everyone else around you safe. So that's, that's, then you can have fun with a mask, and everybody gets to, to you know, stay healthier. All right. That's what Halloween's all about, being healthy. Support your teams and your neighbors. Go Bengals. Go Panthers. Go Cougars. Saving the Cougars.